He's there now. They're all in. They're off. Seven furlongs. The Weatherby Stallion Book Supreme Stakes this Group 3 contest. Pair of greys getting out either side of I'm a Gambler and Misty Grey, the nose-bounded grey, uh, working over. King's Cut glancing across to see where the pace is coming from. Well, Jason Hart has taken I'm a Gambler back in the red and purple and happy power under Will Buick gets a good position against the running rail. Ever given with the orange sleeves in fourth, ahead of Double or Bubble, the black cap on the outside of the field, Sunset Bay in a turquoise jacket is uh, just last as they head towards the end of the uh, third furlong. So Misty Grey dictating here, leading by a length and a half to Happy Power against the fence. I'm a gambler on the near side. Uh, then Ever Given racing upside, Double or Bubble, the black cap and Sunset Bay sticking at the tail of the field. Gone through halfway. Free wheeling now into the straight, on down towards the last three furlongs. Almost two groups of three. Far side against the rail, happy power slipstream by Double or Bubble, Sunset Bay ridden along. Nose banded May, Grey, Misty Grey. Still there though, pushing the pace along. I'm a gambler, asked to close, ever given on the extreme right. Running on down now inside the last quarter mile. Up ahead, Happy Power now surges through to take over. Misty Grey battling away down the middle. Double or Bubble is produced up between them with an irresistible looking run. Double or Bubble pokes her nose ahead. Misty Grey battles back on the near side. Double or Bubble nose down. Got home from Misty Grey. Close third, ever given on the near side of Happy Power that I'm a gambler and Sunset Bay in a thriller. Hearty congratulations must go to Jack Mitchell, who has landed the feature race on the card. The Weatherby Stallion Book Supreme Stakes Group 3 goes the way of Double or Bubble. A fine ride and a fine performance too. It was. Look, she, she was unlucky last year not to, to get ahead in front. Um, she's run some big races, in, big races in big races this year. And, uh, you know, coming into today, she was fit and well and happy. It was just the ground was a bit of a concern for us. That was all. Yeah, absolutely. But it did dry out throughout the course of the day. And that, I assume, has, has helped her a fair bit. I think so, yeah. I mean, the, the description was fair enough after the first and second race, but it's been quite warm here and sunny, so uh, it's, it's soft-sided good, but it, it's dried out. And she was able to use that turn of foot that we know so well from six furlong races over the seven furlongs on the slightly easier ground, and that's what's won of the race. I think so. I mean, obviously going up to seven again, uh, Chris and I spoke for before the race, just, just be mindful, hold on to a little bit longer, especially on this ground. Um, and, you know, with the junction, the cutaway where it was, it got racing a little bit, little bit early, which suited me. I could just hold on to her a little bit longer. And um, yeah, she was wheel spinning around the bend of it. But uh, no, once she got balanced and quickened up, she, uh, she hit the line well. Were you a little bit surprised that William Buick on Happy Power decided to opt to go for the far rail? Because that's not something we've seen so far this weekend much. Uh, it was actually in a few of our plans to possibly go there, only because it hasn't been used. Um, but to be fair, you know, the middle, the middle seems to be the best ground. Um, at, at the minute, but we'll, we'll come all the way across. <laughs> but uh, no, we were thinking about going over the other side, but the race just panned out perfectly. Yeah, it certainly did. Were you worried that Misty Gray was going to battle back towards you? Because she was, well, there, <laughs> he was as game as anything. He's a very game horse. Um, you know, he's obviously a very tough horse on your weather, and he's, he's produced his form onto the turf. The thing is, with, with double, she, she quickens up nicely, but she wouldn't stay in front for too long. Um, you know, I think if we've got another half furlong, she's, she still would have had her head in front. I know Chris Wall and Connections will be deciding what to do with her next, but in your view, where would you like to go with her? Oh, Breeders' Cup would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I leave that to Mr Wall. <laughs> well, she'd be pretty well suited to a Breeders' Cup race, wouldn't she, that turn of foot she's got? Yeah, and look, she loves to run off a fast pace. Um, she's been around a turn. You know, she's, she's, she's got everything for a sort of a sprint, but I think there, there's an option there, maybe over the mile. So, uh, but I'm not planning that, Mr Wall is. <laughs> She'd love that ground too, wouldn't she? she? Exactly. I think that's probably one of the main reasons. Fingers crossed for a trip stateside, but well done today. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Top man. Thank you.